Good morning and welcome, Patriot Radio News Hour. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group, and our toll-free number eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. The website at allamericangold.com, and you know what we do: wealth insurance, the physical delivery of gold and silver, and every one of you, you know, you need to have it. We'll be here when you're ready. Uh, once again. Uh, The longer you wait, the more expensive it's going to be. The rally continues. Uh, Gold and silver uh, continuing to climb higher. Uh, We had the big number out. We've been waiting. How hot was it going to be? Uh, The CPI index uh, yesterday, J.P. Morgan was saying that the whisper number was going to be lower. We didn't get that. But before I tell you why they thought, they actually used pretty good logic. I saw it, you know, we were on the air, so I didn't actually get a chance to read it until after uh, we, we got off the air. They were using pretty good logic on it. And before we get to that, I want to bring my partner Jason in. Uh, Jason, good morning. It, it has been a, a already a very, very busy morning as... Uh, inflation came in much hotter than expected. Seven and a half percent was the headline number. Uh, it briefly had gold and silver down. They came roaring back. Uh, gold at eighteen forty right now. Silver, uh, silver's having a really nice day here, uh, pushing up on twenty three dollars and sixty cents as it appears. Uh, This inflation data is, well, just like we thought. And again, the sad part is this 7.5% doesn't even track the inflation. Yeah, we'll just keep watching it, Joe, because, you know, know, things are happening. And and I think you and I both uh, know that uh, there's something something in the near future, weeks or uh, the next month or so, that uh, things are just going to explode. And when it goes, uh, obviously when it comes to gold and silver, you, you should be buying this stuff right now. Yeah, I mean, you know, look at crude oil uh, back uh, <laughs> over 91, heading to 92, uh, probably heading to somewhere between 125 and $150 a barrel uh, before the summer hits. This thing is not going to relent. They are so far behind. Let me give you uh, a picture here, okay? The last time inflation was this hot, you had to go back to 1982. So 40, is that 40 or 50 years? I got to do math. 40 years ago. But here's the difference. In 1982, they were actually tracking inflation. Okay? So so believe me, it's much worse than this. But when the, 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 that, at that point, the 10-year note, the Fed's funds rate was, we're talking about a 10-year note of 11.5%. So this tells you we're still at somewhere between 0 and 0.25. We, we are so far behind. Uh, and this is really going to be the big problem. Uh, but J.P. Morgan, they came out yesterday and thought that the number was going to be lower because, and, and their logic was pretty good. They said, listen, the stunt that the Bureau of Labor Statistics pulled on the jobs report so remember January's job report, that was last Friday. The number came in, uh, it was a huge number. It like, so shocked the whole market, right? Oh my God, look at all these jobs. And then of course, uh, before the before the Patriot Radio News Hour ended, I told you, oh wait a minute, uh, there's a seasonal adjustment of like, I, I forget what the number was, like 2.5 million jobs, something crazy. They actually thought that the Bureau of Labor Statistics was going to do that again. Because what most people don't know is every two years in January, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, with the help with their friends at the Fed, kind of make little adjustments to the weighting in the basket. So they can make uh, rent, as an example. Well, we can make that just be a little less, and we can make car prices be a little more we could you know they may and they thought that they would use that as cover uh but it, it didn't matter 
It was so bad, it didn't matter what they did. There was only one thing down in the, for the month over month, uh, and that was lodging away from home. That was the only thing that was down. Uh, the next closest thing, new vehicle prices uh, were up a couple of tenths. But, but here, here's the big takeaway uh, and why this number is such a fallacy. Uh, the owner equivalent rent for residents, uh, the Federal Reserve sticking to uh, 4%. Of course, we all know. That number is somewhere between 15 and 20 percent. By the way, it got even worse. Rent of primary residence, if it, and, and again, I don't know where they come up with this number, uh, 3.76 percent. So yes, uh, uh, this is one of the big ways they're keeping inflation under wraps. But this was this was a huge number. Uh, they were expecting 7.2 on a headline. It was 7.5. Uh, just take out food and energy, right? Because they want to pretend that we don't need food and we don't need energy. That number, Jason, was still 6%. Uh, I guess uh, that 2% fantasy land number uh, no longer applies. So what you're saying is is Airbnbs are charging less because people can't afford vacations right now? That's that's kind of what I heard, the one down number. Well, that was well, let me tell you about the Airbnb. It was down for this month, but the year-over-year -year number... Believe it or not, that is really, I'm so glad you brought that up. The one housing number that was only were close to accurate, lodging away from home year over year, up 20%. So, you do the math. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back right after the break. 800 A couple of of quick things here and I and I hate doing it but it is what it is you got to act quick here um, for first let, let's start with uh, the limited 222 uh, coins uh, we've got about 35 left uh, that's it we're not making any more of them uh, the half empty cup of Joe we, we're, we're making 500 of those versus uh, the 222 on the 2222 coin, uh, we still got about 300 of those left, uh, but we're almost out. If you want a piece of that, uh, and they're awesome, uh, you got to do it probably today. Uh, and also, we got a Jason, we're down to what, about a baker's dozen now. If you missed out on the 2021 pure blood coin, uh, we've got about a baker's dozen of those uh, left if you want to get in on it. And then I've got a really good, unique little gold special today. There's only 10 of these. They are a, a, a set of 10. These are going to be Mint State 61 $5 Liberty. So this is 1866 to 1907. This is the quarter ounce. And all of you know uh, the, the quarter ounce, you know, like the $5 Indians are off the charts. $5 Libs, uh, right now an ungraded $5 Liberty, uh, you're looking at 610 bucks. This is going to be 10 different mint marks. Okay, so 10 different, you know, dates as we call them. Uh, in all PCGS or NGC graded, you have to buy the set. There's only 10 sets they are $6,500 or $650 a coin. And for a Mint State 61 $5 Liberty, I'm telling you, that's a great price. Uh, so if you're interested in that, if you're, if you're, you're a person that likes dates, uh, and you're going to get a lot of the pre-1900s, which really uh, is harder to do in these fractional coins, uh, because a $5 Liberty was used probably a hundred times more than a $20 Liberty going back into, you know, the 1870s and 1880s. Uh, so you get uh, 10 different dates. Uh, th this is limited. We, we could be out of this in a matter of seconds because I wasn't the only one that was offered this opportunity. Uh, so if you want something like that, call right away, 800 951 uh, for right now, both uh, the Pure Blood 2022 
coin and the half empty cup of Joe coin are still available on the Patriot shopping cart. Uh, my guess is by today the 222 coin, Jason, will be gone. Yeah, that coin's essentially a sellout. It's sold out because uh, if for some reason uh, we've we've milked all the customers that want them and there's like 15 coins left, I'll tell you right now when we uh, have our pickup party on the 18th, uh, when people are picking up their coin, I'll, I'll, if there's anything sitting there, they're going to be like, give me another one. That's 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 what's going to happen when they get them in their hands. So essentially this is a sellout. So if you want one of these 35 coins that are left, jump on it quick. And on those $5 liberties, the set – uh, yeah, tr- tremendous value. Getting getting mint state fractional gold is much harder than the twenties that we do once in a while. And p- what people don't understand, you know, just once in a while, you just got to remind the audience, Joe, a five dollar liberty in your pocket in the eighteen hundreds is the same as you carrying around six or seven hundred dollars in your pocket. I mean, that's that's essentially what that was uh, back then. So there, was no, there wasn't a lot of people in the eighteen hundreds carrying around five six hundred dollars in their pocket. Just like not, not too many people do that today. Yeah, and again, uh, we're we're watching gold prices here. Uh, gold's up five right now. Another at, at eighteen forty, uh, clearly above where we need to be. And I know Jason and I. We, you know, I watch charts more than Jason, but Jason has his favorite chart here, where uh, eighteen forty is a key. But gold did something really impressive again today. So go back to last Friday. Remember, last Friday gold was. About 1803, 1804. And then that jobs number came out. That that fantasy land number that J.P. Morgan was banking on the Bureau of Labor Statistics of playing games again. And, and uh, we don't, too early to tell. I'll, I'll find out what adjustments they did make, and it'll be interesting to see. But neither here nor there. Gold went all the way down to that that seventeen seventy eight number that it likes to go to, and then before the end of the day, it was all the way back up. That was an important move. Today, uh, that really red hot inflation number. Uh, by the way, the ten year note has hit two percent today, which is kind of laughable. But we'll get to that in a minute. Initially. They're like, oh, you know, because usually what happens when, when bond yields rise, right, dollar gets stronger, gold goes down. It hit 18.20, boom, back up now. And now, of course, 18.40, uh, these are really good indication of a lot of buying in the gold markets. And very interesting today, even with the 10-year note surging, the dollar's down. They're starting to figure out, Jason, this isn't a, a dollar strength play with yields rising. It's dollar weakness. Yeah, the banks are just wanting to, to, to get ahead of these uh, rate hikes, which are coming. You know, I, I can't believe there's still people out there, Joe, that think that the, the Fed's not going to raise the rates. It's going to happen. Well, and again, these people, uh, and, and, and the, this is the Fed's own doing. Listen, don't, you know, when, when we sit there, should you be surprised? I mean, rates have been zero, well, zero and po- between zero and point two five since two thousand eight, right? Except for there was a brief time. I think it it didn't even last like a year and a half. Outside of one little year and a half period, this is the, the this is where the rates have been. And and most people, when they sit there and they make those comments, here's what they think. Well, I remember Janet Yellen tried to do it. Look what happened, right? That didn't last very long, and neither is this round. Again, uh, I've been saying it. I've been on the record as saying it. We've got two choices. Massive inflation, and I mean massive. Again, you haven't seen inflation yet. I know a lot of you want, oh, no, it's almost over. No. No. It's not even close to being over. But again, I, I, I want I don't want to get a, get ahead of myself, but I've been saying this all along. Two choices: we got to live with this new normal of sky high inflation, or the Federal Reserve's got to raise rates, has to raise rates until the economy comes crashing down. Those are really the only two options. I wish there was a third option. I wish there was a a, a, a fourth option, uh, but there isn't. Listen, I, I, I'll, I'll give you a great example. Bloomberg has a, they call it the agricultural spot sub-index, okay? 
I don't, well, that's a fancy way of saying we've taken uh, about a dozen of the most popular crops and put them into a, a little ETF. It's at an all-time record high. Uh, one of the guys came out and said, listen, here's what, and, and again, this was uh, Peter Torbert. Says 2022 is going to be a very odd year. As food prices are at all time record highs and are continuing to go higher, demand has to cool off. You cannot eat or drink something that is not available and only the price can make it cool off. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. There's no stock of anything. Every major commodity in the world is either at a, you know, a multi-decade low or, or all-time record lows. And, and this guy, he, he's, he's nailed it here. There's only one way to stop it. We got to make the price so expensive nobody can buy it anymore. Demand has to cool off, Jason. That's correct. That's correct. We've been talking about this uh, on this show and on the uh, half empty cu- cup of Joe. Is it, this is this is where we're at? And 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 I just I was uh, we, we covered that FOIA request two Mondays ago, Joe. And uh, before we we knew that before that was brought to us, uh, I had mentioned, well, they'll they'll raise the rates and, and try to act responsible. And just like you said, it'll 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 come tumbling down. And then the only thing you can do is try to kick the can down the road to see if they can print a bunch again and, and see if it, they can settle things, but which means more inflation. So the inflation doesn't look like it can go away. And and w- with the assumption uh, with that FOIA request that they, they printed $29 trillion back in 2008 to 2010 instead of $5 trillion, the assumption that uh, Glenn Beck was making, well, they may, may be uh, putting a trillion dollars a week into this and into, into balancing things, and I remember I had mentioned Joe's like, well, if they start printing again, and it won't be 120 billion a month to keep things floating, it might be 700 billion or 800 billion. Remember me saying that? Well, maybe it's four trillion. Maybe it's four trillion a month is what they have to do to try to make the next round go, Joe. Yeah, and, and this is going to be a terrible situation. Uh, I'll, I'll just use mortgages here uh, as bond yields continue to spike here. Uh, two. 202 uh, and I'm laughing because it's such a low number but it, it it really isn't this is a number we haven't seen in years here's the problem in the last 30 days the uh, I take a a $375,000 mortgage okay which there's not very many of those out there right cuz all the houses are more than that but the monthly payment has risen almost $175 now in a month. Year over year, we're approaching $400 a month more. And here's the problem. Rates are going to go a lot higher than that, and and it's going to be one of these situations, Jason, where, again, like I said, there's only one one of two solutions here. The Fed is going to start raising rates, Talk real tough. The economy is going to start to buckle, and they're going to tuck tail and run, and we're going right back to zero, right back to quantitative easing, right back to to all of those things. Or, and we're going to have just horrible stagflation, or we're we're going into a recession. That's our and I and really when I say recession, I'm talking like recession slash depression I think those are the only two options again go back to 1982 the last time inflation was this high and of course remember in 1982 they actually tracked inflation the 10-year note was 11 and a half we're talking about two here Jason that's right that's right uh, when they when they were when they were raising rates there well, essentially it was a 2016 to 2018 uh, the little quarter point here quarter point there uh, what happened after 2018 going into 2019? Coronavirus showed up. Big, massive market crash. They can blame coronavirus on everything. And, man, I watched some of the regular mass media news yesterday, Joe. They just blame coronavirus on everything. Now it's all but coronavirus. The fault. Yeah, the, the president out saying he's blaming the pandemic. By the way, real wages, and this is the bad part, down for the ninth month out of the last 11 uh, your buying power is just not keeping up. We've, and think about this. There, there's no 
doubt wages have been rising, and and now you have central bankers going out and trying to tell people, don't demand too much money. Don't demand too much, because they're trying to keep this inflation genie in the bottle. The math doesn't work. I've told you all along, by the time they get to $15, they're going to need 30 And this thing isn't stopping here. Uh, and the president is absolutely out the way. This guy he has no idea what he's talking about. And he was just out there again this morning uh, making an idiot out of himself. He just doesn't understand what's really happening out there. He thinks he thinks all of, oh, yeah, you, everyone's getting more money, so it's all fine. He's absolutely clueless. Yeah, he's been in uh, Washington, you know, federal politics for, like, what, almost a half century. So... Uh, I, I think some of the guys they put in these uh, positions, these puppets, don't know what's going on, and I think some of them do. And I, his lack of really interest in the position of presidency, uh, unlike other presidents, he just seems lackadaisical and just daydreaming. And makes me wonder if he knows that he was put in this position to be this fall guy, Joe. And how exciting is that job, right? Who wants to take that position? But uh, he had probably a few favorites yeah. he has to pay back. Yeah, you're, you're, you're bringing up some really interesting points. 800-951-0592. Get on these deals while well, we still got them. We'll be back. 800-951-0592. The 10-year note continuing to rise. Uh, 203. Uh, big, big. That's a really big move uh, in the 10-year note. And yet the dollar continuing to fall, uh, which is exactly what we're going to see here. Uh, r- really quickly, we have the date sets. Uh, there's... There's seven sets. These are the Mint State 61 $5 Liberties. You're going to get 10 different dates. You've got to buy the whole set, 650 uh, bucks a coin, or it's $6,500 for the set. Uh, you're going to get a lot of the pre-1900 uh, coins in there at 800 592 Silver, uh, we have our, you know, our half-empty cup, our 222 coins, uh, but U.S. Silver Eagles, these are going to be 2022s. Uh, can, uh, they're going to be $700, and this is probably the first, last, and only day at that price uh, as silver continues to rally here, uh, now up 30 cents, uh, 23.65, and uh, and let me just tell you. Record physical demand for silver in 2022. Uh, and they're saying that there's going to be a, a silver shortage, saying that 1.112 billion ounces of silver. They're saying they expect an 8% increase uh, in silver demand. And, Jason, I'm going to tell you right now, that number is light. I think we're going to see a double-digit increase in the silver markets. Uh, they're saying that they uh, the, that silver mining production it's going to be just over a billion, but they said that scrap silver, which it all comes from industrial right refurbishing industrial silver, uh, is expected to have. A very bad year as far as scrap silver goes, and they anticipate a, a silver deficit. Uh, and then, of course, they did highlight uh, how the U.S. Mint uh, blew out uh, 5 million ounces in less than a month to start the year, Jason. Yeah, I think 2021 was the last year we'll see for a while. Uh, sideways or down on gold and silver. Uh, I think 2022 ushers in now every year. I would say for sure the rest of this decade. You'll see an upward movement in gold and silver every single year. It could, it could be two decades straight where you just see pressure upwards of gold and silver. So, uh, I mean, really, Joe, I mean, where, where are you going to go with the, the way society is moving and the way the politics and the uh, the way the uh, the economic markets are failing? I, I don't see anything but gold and silver going up with the the uh, the dangers of economics in the world every single year. And, you know, and, year. and we bring up these points. We don't say these things lightly. We don't. Jason doesn't say that lightly. Oh, he just wants to sell gold or silver. Yeah, I mean that's what we do. But we, but the reason is is simple. Look at just uh, all the things just in the last few weeks that have come to light through these Freedom of Information Acts stuff we didn't know. 
about the last round of bailouts and how bad it really was and how much money Ben Bernanke and Janet Yellen hid from the public. Then they used the courts to say, hey, we can't release this information right now because we were supposed to, within two years, learn the truth. And they were able to, 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 to extend it another 10. So we had to go 12 years uh, before we learned what they really did. Uh, then we got some Freedom of Information Act stuff, and, and I'm sure the Fed would have hit it if they, uh, but they got outsmarted that even back in 2019, before we heard of COVID, there was a big problem in that bond market again, right? And all of a sudden, rates went back to zero, right? Quantitative, e uh, quantitative tightening went back. To quantitative easing and like a snap of a finger and then COVID and it covered it all up and nobody talked about it. now we realize trillions more and, and this thing is so much bigger it, and it really just reemphasizes my point listen I wish I do man wouldn't it be great if the Fed could just raise, raise rates two or three times and it fixed the problem you're naive and, and, and dare I say a little bit stupid if you actually believe that. Uh, unfortunately, this house of cards, it's not very sturdy. All of these things uh, that they use to try to prop it up, which is, hey, drive everything sky high, right? Housing prices, this is kind of where the rubber meets the road. As rates start rising and all of a sudden these monthly payments get expensive, it, it limits the ability for the prices to keep rising. And as soon as these prices start to fall a little bit, Jason, all these derivatives are right back to where they were uh, heading into 2019, which was getting ready to crash again. That's right. Uh, we had the dot-com bubble early in this in this new century, and we had the, uh, the housing debacle and then crisis in 2008, 9, and 10. Gold was up every single year from 2000 to 2012, 12 straight years when you had economic uh, stress. And then, of course, Joe, we know what they did. They lowered the rates down to nothing forever, and they just uh, printed, 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 and printed in levels that they would never even let us know about. Well, and, and, right, and that was the problem. They've been printing the whole time. They've been lying to us the whole time. They've been hiding the information from us the whole time. How about this, this one here, a little local flavor, Southwest Gas. Okay, so here in Arizona, Southwest Gas provides our gas. We don't use our heaters a lot here, right? Maybe three, four months out of the year max. They're asking people to please stop calling. There's nothing wrong. No, you don't have natural gas leaking out of your pipes because the bills, let me give you an example. The average Southwest Gas bill in December was $40. In December and January were about the same as far as temperatures go. Uh, the January bill, you're looking at almost $100, 125% increase in the cost. And Southwest uh, says uh, that the increase in customers' bills is not due to gas leaks at your house. Uh, it is likely due to natural gas prices that have increased dramatically uh, between 2020 and 2021, and that uh, it is just during the winter months. They went on to say that Southwest Gas purchases natural gas on behalf of its comp of its customers with no profit to the company so they wanted to let you know hey listen it's not we're not making any money on this we're just charging you what it cost us you know I, and I, I don't know how much I believe that but but again there you have it Jason it's not 10 percent it's definitely not seven and a half percent now 125 percent Patriot Radio News Hour we'll be back after the break 800-951-0592 get your gold and silver put away listen you're gonna call you're gonna call because you know you gotta have it might as well call while it's still relatively inexpensive uh gold's up 6 1842 silver's now up 
35 cents, 2370, uh, and it's going a lot higher. How about this? Chipotle CEO, I'm sorry, yeah, CEO, uh, Brian Nicoli, says that he, and this is today, he has seen no signs that inflation is slowing down. Uh, he said that beef costs, freight costs, and all, pretty much every cost. I wish I could forecast when this inflation is going to slow down. But unfortunately, we're not getting any signs that it's going to slow down. He goes that right now we are worried about even introducing any new items. We don't want to do all of this work. We don't want to go through the process to develop these things only to find out six months later that the cost is going to be 20% more. And again, I'm telling you right now that that 20% he's talking about, he already knows. That's exactly what's going to happen to the food prices in the next six months. We're going to see another 20%, Jason. Yeah, my wife was uh, getting groceries a couple days ago, and uh, something we're starting to notice because we, we do a lot of cooking. We don't eat out <clears throat> very much. And uh, I have a very limited diet. I, I, I like eating the same sorts of things. I don't have to think about what to eat every day. But unless Brooke is cooking something fantastic, it's, it's, I have normal meals. And so we have these typical items we pick up every week. And, Joe, we're, find, we're starting to find that there's, uh, I would call them like a rolling shortages. You know, hey, there's, this, I, this cheese item is just out this week, and then it's back the next week. But then another item and the, and the uh, produce is out for about a week. You know, it's it's almost like these these groceries, big businesses, are trying to figure out how to. They're, they're, I think they're they've worked a system, Joe, of how to. Well, how do we get uh, uh, California to be short on this month and Colorado to be short on that month? I think they're they're, they're putting a system together. They're just barely holding it together, Joe. I think they're just all barely holding it together. How about to, well? Let me tell you, news today: Ford and General Motors halting production at plants. Uh, across the country uh, because of the Canadian truckers, sh- right? They, they're, they're not shipping. They're blocking the bridges. They don't even have enough product to last a few days. Uh, and, of course, this thing, they knew this, this trucker thing was going to happen. So you know they tried to order as many parts ahead of time. And now, Jason, they're, they're shutting down production. That's right. You know, it's, that's it. all of these are symptoms of a, a, of an economic system that's weak and, and there's problems. And on top of that, with the inflation that we've had, that is much higher than it's been. You know, the, we've always had this inflation that we shouldn't have had at all, Joe. This this whole two percent is a theft every year. Is, is always drove me nuts. But now we're here at the fifteen percent level, and uh, it's just going to make it worse and worse and worse and worse. There's, the reason there's truckers stuck at a border that, once again, oh, we're going to blame coronavirus. It's not coronavirus. They have to have things in the news to uh, to make you feel safe about the emergencies that are happening, Joe. When people think that the money ain't there and the stuff you need is going to go away, then people really start to panic. Yeah, I mean this is this is going to be a situation. Like I said, and, and I, you know, and why 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 would I bring up the the trucker thing? Because it doesn't matter what it is, right? Any little thing up, it got too cold. Crude oil prices up another five dollars. It got too hot. Crude oil prices up another five dollars. Oh wait, there was a a storm in the Gulf, right? Oh wait, uh, Russia and Ukraine. Oh wait, uh, Libya. There was uh, a bomb blew up in the capital. Uh, the UAE got hit by a by a drone strike. It doesn't matter. Any little thing, and, and this here's the problem. It's not like you're going to see, oh, well, it went up a dollar. No, no. We're going to see $5, $10. Uh, and if it's something actually major, right, you're going to see prices that literally, you know, we're thinking about Europe. At multiple times during the last six months, you've had companies, manufacturers, literally have to shut down. Because the cost to power the plant was going to be so great that they knew there's no way we you know we'd have to we'd have to charge 
ten times, you know, if something, let's just say they're producing something that costs a dollar, they sell it for a dollar, they're like, well, hey, we'd have to sell it for ten or fifteen dollars. No one's going to pay that. We've got to shut down, Jason. This is what we're talking about. That's right. And uh, the smaller the business, the more the strain and, and the, uh, the, the the probability of going out of business. You know, I mean, Joe. Rolling blackouts yep. are coming. Yep. Uh, this is not a California thing anymore. Uh, we, we, we were looking at these things. This The power the power grid is at its limits. They We've way, way underinvested. I'll give you another. Uh, the state of New York is now uh, defunding, selling out all of these oil and gas companies that they feel like haven't made enough progress to be green. And this is a huge problem. The underinvestment in the energy fields and the energy markets has been so great. You have no idea. Uh, the largest power operator in the country, it's a power operator in the East Coast, said, hey, no more. We need a hiatus. Uh, we can't process all of these solar farms and get them attached to our grids. It doesn't work that way. Uh, and Jason, we got a big problem here. Yeah, I, I mean, what about uh, the economic news has been rosy for a while, Joe? There's, there's, you, know, you try to report when the numbers are better, and hey, this, these are good e economic indicators once in a while. But we, it seems like we've last few months, six months or so, it's hard to find those, Joe. Yeah, and the problem is when they're better, there's always a caveat to it, right? It's it's not as good as it's seen, and that's been the biggest problem. Patriot Radio News Hour, final segment coming up. 800-951-0592, gold, silver, crude oil, all continuing to rally. Matter of fact, uh, gold's at the highs of the day here, uh, 1843. Silver's at the highs of the day, uh, 2372. Uh, as the inflation data came out, uh, hot, 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 uh, we've got... 2022 Silver Eagles, uh, they're $700 today at 800 951 and, and again, they're not going to be 700 very long. Uh, and then we have a couple of date sets left. These are the MS-61 $5 Liberties. Uh, these are the 1866 to 1907. You're going to get 10 different mint marks. Uh they're gonna. It's you got to buy the whole set. They're sixty five hundred dollars a piece. Uh, Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Uh, and Jason, we're watching. You know, a, a week ago, uh, you know, gold was eighteen hundred bucks. Now we're sitting here and we're staring down eighteen fifty. And and I think we're going to see this continuation here. Uh, they've lost control of this thing. Uh, and unfortunately, here's the bad part. They're actually lying to you about how bad it's going to be. And, and that's the part that really angers me because they already know, based on where oil inventories are right now, this summer drive season is going to be absolutely horrendous. Yeah, I agree, Joe. Agreed. And, and uh, something you said earlier, so I think sometimes listeners are listening, they don't, they don't get some of the things we say. So I'm going to back one. One of the things you said, I'm going to back you up. And you said, get gold now. While it's this cheap, We're not saying that gold is cheap. What Joe is saying is, in relativity to other things right now, gold is cheap. And that's exactly what's going on, Joe. Yeah, and, and, and again, listen, they're going to all time highs. Gold is going to have new highs. Silver is going to have new highs. It, it's not. It's not a matter of maybe. This is what it's going to be. And, and again, they were being artificially suppressed. I mean, think about what, I, what I've what i been saying for the last few weeks. We, you know, you only get the data when they release it. Physical demand, and take gold and take silver both. We're absolutely off the charts everywhere but one market. The banker paper market. That was it. And guess what? The banker paper market is kind of saying, okay, gigs up. You got us. Right? Yeah, it's not transitory, and yep, and this is not good, and and uh, the Fed's going to have to at least pretend to try to fight inflation. And I think just pretending, Jason, is is enough uh, to really cause problems uh, for Wall Street. That's exactly right, and like I, I, I uh, made an analogy the other day, when gold was getting ready to break through its all-time highs in 2020, every other country in the, in the whole world had record gold highs. 
and then it broke loose. That you're saying the same thing right here, Joe. It's, it's, it's you know, it, you know, all these metals, all these commodities are all at record highs. And I want to remind everybody the amount of money created. There's so much of it out there, and when it flows into these gold and silver markets, you're just going to see massive, massive increases. Remember, there was a day uh, at the beginning of the year, in one single day. Something like, what was it, 27 metric tons or something like, some crazy number uh, came into the paper gold market. And and I'm telling you right now, that number is going to be look like a tiny number when it really starts pouring in. 800 951 592